This demonstration we're going to look at the Exchange Server Role Requirements Calculator. With this utility we input information relating to the business and functional requirements of our Exchange organisation and the utility will then give us recommendations for building that environment. First thing we have to do is input data. So if we look down here what we've got is we've got our Exchange Environment Configuration. Yes we are 2016, we are 64-bit for the Global Catalog Server. Server Role Virtualization, we will virtualise it, we're going to use Hyper-V. High availability deployment, yes, we don't want to lose an email in the case of a failure. So the first thing we've got to do here is specify the number of mailbox servers hosting active databases. And that, in our case, will be two. So we'll change that to two. Then what we'll have, based off that, we'll have one DAG. Like I said, we are a small environment. Next thing to do is to scroll across, and as we can see across here, what we now get is we now get our site resilient configuration. So we will have a resilient deployment. We're actually going to go for active passive. So all we'll do here is we'll click on the little drop down and we'll go for our active passive. In the case of site resilience recovery point objective, I'll leave the default at 24 hours and I'm not going to bother modifying the activation block secondary data center mailbox servers. But as you can see here, if you do scroll over the various boxes, it gives you some useful information. So for example, there are scenarios in which you may want to create mailbox database copy and prevent the system from automatically activating it. An example of that would be something like a lagged database copy. Well, we don't really want to go back a week if we've only lost, let's say, one email. So we'll scroll this down. Next thing we've got here is we've now got our mailbox database copy configuration. So we've got the total number of HA database copy instances active with a DAG. I'm happy with three. Total number of lagged database copies. I'm not going to have any, so we'll modify that to be zero. And then we've got number of HA database copy instances in the secondary data centre. Yes, we're happy with one. Because we've told it not to use lagged copies, it's greyed out the lagged copies. Scroll it back again, and then what we'll do is we'll scroll this down, and we'll now start on our exchange data configuration. So the data overhead factor at this point here, currently set to naught. I'm expecting some explosive growth, so I will modify this value. So we'll just highlight the value. We'll come up here, and we'll just specify the value. And I'm expecting this to be about 25%, so just modify that 25%. Right, mailbox moves, weak percentage. It's going to be a fairly static environment, so I'll just leave the 1%. Uh, I'm not going to have a dedicated maintenance restore volume. Volume free space percentage, I'm going to modify that. I'm going to make that, let's make that 10%. So we'll just double that up. Uh, log shipping network compression, yes, we'll leave that as enabled, and we'll leave that as 30%. So if we scroll this across a bit more, we've now got our database configuration. So the maximum database size, I'll just leave the default. I won't bother modifying any of this. Move this across a bit more. Then what we've got is got I.O. configuration. We're happy with the defaults that are in place here with the overhead fact there. I'm also happy as well with the transport configuration as well. So yes, we're happy with that. We're just going with the defaults on that as well. So if we scroll this down a bit further, the next thing we've got here is we've now got our role requirements input factors. So what we're going to do here, we've got tier 1 users, tier 2 users, tier 3 users, tier 4 users. So you decide exactly what this means to you in your organisation. So the total number of tier 1 users I'm actually going to have in my environment, I'm going to drop that down. Like I said, small environment, we'll have 400. Right, projected mailbox number growth percentage. I'm just going to leave the defaults for that. I'm not expecting that to grow. I am going to modify the number of messages, though. I'm expecting 300 messages uh, per day, send, receive. Uh, average message size in the case of my Tier 1 users. Let's make that 150 kilobytes. There's what we'll have in there. Initial mailbox size. What we'll do with the initial mailbox size is we'll actually modify that. That'll actually be um, 10 gig instead of 2 gig. So let's just modify that. So we'll do that as 10240. And then what we'll do is we'll specify a mailbox limit. Let's make that about 25 gig. So we'll go for 25, uh, 625. Right, delete date and retention. So this will actually increase this space as well because I'm going to modify that from the 14 days to 30 days. Then what we need to do is do our tier 3 and our tier Two. So we'll go for the tier 3 users first. We'll modify that to be 400. Now that we've modified that, what we'll also do as well for our tier 3 users is we will specify in the case of the projected number growth percentage. I'm happy with that. Um, what we'll do though is we will say they're only going to send, let's say, in the case of these users here, 
let's just make that 150 messages average message size what we'll do with the average message size I'm fairly happy with the 75 kilobytes initial mailbox size what we'll do with this point here is we'll leave that as well in the case of the defaults but the mailbox size limit is we will specify these to 2048 won't bother modifying anything else I'm fairly happy with all the other settings there we'll just come back to our tier 2 users and for our two, tier 2 users we'll make those um, let's have this point here 2400 we'll have so we've got that in place other things we'll do is we'll have a projected growth of let's make that 10% and then what we'll also do as well is we'll have an initial uh, mailbox size of 2 gig. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have a mailbox limit for these users and we'll leave that. No, we'll modify that. We'll make that 5 gig. So we've now modified that. We're not going to bother with any tier 4 users. So if we scroll this down, uh, other things, backup config. I'm happy with the defaults for the backup config. I will be using some sort of a compliant e backup system. Storage options. I'm using a DAG, so we'll go with just a bunch of disks. In the case of primary data center server disk configuration, I will just leave the 72k disks. Probably out there in the real world, you probably have better disks. Server config. Process cores, 16. I'm happy with that. Hypervisor. Yeah, 10% for the hypervisor. We'll set that aside. Log replication configuration, I'm just going to leave the defaults. And then finally what we need to do is we just need to name our servers and name our DAG. So what we'll do here is we'll just rename the servers. I'll start with the first one being lon-ex1. And then what we'll do is we'll go lon-ex2. And then finally what we're going to do here is we're going to have another data center. So we're going to have that in Berlin. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll go for bur-ex1 as well. So now that we've input this information, what we can now do is use this information to then generate our config. So what's going to happen is as I start clicking on these buttons, it's now taking the information that I fed in from the input and it's putting that information into our environment here. So there's my growth in place there as well. Activation scenarios at this point here, so it's giving me information relating to how we're going to set up our active passive environment. If we have a look at the distribution, that doesn't make any sense. That's based off the original names. Now, one of the things we can do here, if we just export our DAG list, and all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stick it in C colon backslash lab files, and we'll just select OK. And now what it does is changes this little utility. So what we can see now is we now have our active passive environment. We can see the active copies. We can see the passive copies of our various databases. We can also as well see where the passive copies go as well. So it's showing us recommendations based off the information that we input. So if we move this on, we've got volume requirements. So it gives us information relating to our volume requirements. And it also gives us our backup requirements. If we scroll this a bit further, re replication requirements, mailbox space modeling. So it shows us this. If we have a look at this, we've got storage design. We've got our version change. So what it's giving us at this point here it's giving us relevant information relating to the input. And this can help us then design our Exchange 2016 environment. This was just an overview demo of the utility. It is worth having a look at the utility. It will help you out and it will help you design your environment. Thank you.